My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our show. Now, in today's message, it's going to be part two from last week, Learning to Dance in the Rain. You know, we're all going to go through storms in our life at some time or the other because life is hard and bad things happen to good people. But in this teaching today, we're going to continue our study of how we can survive the storms, but not only survive, but thrive. Be blessed by this message. But see, when you look at this, it's a ranking order. It's like a military. And the first one at the, at the highest level is the principalities. Now, these have been around since the fall of Lucifer. And they have delegated authority to delegate. The next level is the powers. They receive from the principalities. And see, these are tormenting spirits that have permission to torment you in the weak areas of your life. And then the next level is the rulers of darkness. Do y'all think we live in a pretty dark world right now? <laughs> and I believe the longer we live, the principalities of the air are coming down. And it's going to be harder and harder to live for Jesus because we live in a dark world. And this is time for the church to shine for Jesus because we have power and we have authority. But see, these ranking officers of the demonic world and of the uh, of soldiers, if you look, they're organized. But the problem with Christians is we're not disciplined. Hey, let's face it. We're not disciplined. The word disciple means disciplined. We're not, we don't pray like we should. We don't read the word like we should. We're not committed like we should. We're committed until something better comes along. We're not faithful. But hey, when you're in this battle, you got to learn to see how the enemy operates. And you got to know your weakness and know where the attack is coming from. It's not from people. It's from the enemy. Amen? Amen. And put on the whole armor of God. And see, we're going to talk a little bit about the armor today. Because I think the thing about it, we don't really understand the power that we have. We've given the power over the enemy, but until we get disciplined to do our part and for, ask for forgiveness, you know, I know the, the, the Lord covers our sins, but what's wrong with confessing them again and again and say, Lord, Lord, I repent. I repent. And keeping our heart pliable. So let's talk now about how to wear this armor properly. Because we got a battle and we're in it to win it, aren't we? Amen. All right, let's go to Ephesians 6, 13 through 14. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of of righteousness. You know, as I was thinking about that, we love to say, well, the Lord says to do all we know to do and then stand. And a lot of people are just standing and they ain't done nothing. <laughs> and the Lord, that's not the way the Lord moves. You got to do your part because faith is action. You don't have your armor on. You're expecting the Lord to do a miracle and you're not even believing and having faith and putting your armor on yourself. See, these clothes just didn't jump on my body. I had to put them on. And the Lord's not going to just say, I'm going to put your armor on for you today to fight the enemy. That's not the way he operates. You have to do your part. But the thing about it, when you think about the armor of God, now I talked about this at a ladies' conference in Jackson. So I'm going to mention just a few. So if you're watching this show and it's a little review, I think you need to hear it again and for you here that are today. But if you look at the armor of God, it mentions the helmet of salvation. And y'all, these Roman soldiers, their helmets were gorgeous. I mean, they were like a piece of, uh, of uh, ornament. I mean, they were gorgeous. They had designs on them. They were like a sculpture. They had feathers that was coming off the top of them, and, and they were just gorgeous. And so why did the Roman soldiers need a helmet? Now, that's not a hard question. Y'all can answer that. So they wouldn't get their head cut off. <laughs> Because they had the swords, and the enemy had the swords, and they could lose their heads. So the helmet was very important for the Roman soldiers. But what better uh, piece of the armor to be called our helmet of salvation? 
helmet of salvation. Why? Because the mind is the battlefield. That's why the word says to take every thought captive because the enemy wants to put lies in your mind and you got to put on the helmet of salvation and say, no, I understand who I am in Jesus. Satan, I'm not going to believe these lies today. I am a child of God. I will be healed and set free and put on the helmet of salvation. But that's not all of it. The next part, breastplate of righteousness. That's the next thing I want to talk about. Because when you think about the Roman soldiers and the breastplates, what did it cover? Their heart, the organs. And y'all, these were beautiful too. I mean, these Roman soldiers had it going on. They looked good in their attire. But these were made of like brass. And the more they walked, around in these, their armor with the breastplate, it got shinier and shinier. The brass would get shinier and shinier. And then what would happen when they got together as a group going toward the enemy and the sun was shining on them, it would blind the enemies. So what better way to be called the breastplate of righteousness? It protects your heart. Because we've all been wounded. We've all been hurt. But once you understand that you are the child of, king, of the king, and when he died on the cross, he died for your sins. You are made right with Jesus. You're on your way to heaven. He remembers your sins no more. And the more you understand who you are in Jesus, the brighter your, your uh, breastplate's gonna become. As you understand, you hold your shoulders back and say, no, I'm the head and not the tail. No, I'm above and not beneath. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a chosen generation. I am made right by Jesus. There's no condemnation in Jesus Christ. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And once you understand that, your armor gets shinier and shinier. And then when you get out of bed, you're going to look like a Holy Ghost filled glow worm. Do y'all remember those little glow worms that the babies had? Do they still have those? (laughs) And you would just mash them and they would just light up the room. And see, when you're filled with the Spirit of the Lord and you know who you are in Jesus, there's a light to you. If you don't have a light, something's wrong. See, some of you, your light's not shining right now. Y'all remember that song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Gonna Let It Shine? Well, what happened to the shine? You let the cares of the world snuff it out and not getting in the presence of the Lord like you need to. But once you understand you're filled with his spirit and you know who you are and you've got on that breastplate of righteousness, you'll have so much fire and such a glow that when you get out of bed, the enemy's gonna say, they're up today, let us flee. They got such a lot of the Holy Ghost on them, let us flee. And you know what, you're gonna have light that's gonna draw people. Because this world is dark right now, and it needs Jesus. And we need to become the light of the world instead of blending in with the world. If people have to ask you if you're a Christian, you might want to examine that your your life just a little bit. Because see, there's a lot of people pulling around the old diaper that they used to have. (laughs) Old grave clothes. When God's called you to be something new in Christ Jesus. So put on the breastplate of righteousness. But you can't wear that if you don't know who you are in Jesus. And when, you have, when you're doubting your salvation, because so many people doubt their salvation. Maybe you were brought up in a denomination, you felt like you were walking on a tight rope of hell. Okay, I thought something wrong, I'm in hell today. Oh, I thought something right, I'm in, and you repented every time you went to church. No, you didn't just repent, you got re-saved again. <laughs> Reborn and reborn and reborn again. But you know what? We got to examine our lives and understand that we are made right by the blood of Jesus. Nothing we did, only through his blood, we're made right by the blood of Jesus. Then there is the loin belt of the Roman soldier. Now, a loin, I'm sure that the enemy didn't really notice the belt too much. But see, the belt was the most important part of the armor. Because see, it held everything else together. 
And if you didn't have your belt on, you would lose your armor. <laughs> and see, the belt of truth is the Word of God. It's our Bible. That's the only part of the armor of God that we can see. And actually, people have them in every room, but they're covered with dust. And that is the belt of truth is our Bibles. And we're trying to fight the enemy, and we don't even have our belt on. Now, how many of y'all are attracted? Do you think men's belt are, are nice looking? Oh, I really like that belt. Now, I like belts. I notice belts. But you know what? It has a purpose. But the belt of truth is the most important thing that you can have. And see, what we do is we show up at church once a week. We go in, and what we're really saying is, Pastor, will you put on my belt for me today? Put my belt on me. See, as we're children, we dress our children. We put the belt on them. But once you grow up, you got to dress yourself. And that's when we want to blame everybody else, but we don't have our belt on. Our armor's falling off. See, you can't de delineate between the belt of truth and the sword of the Spirit. Now, to explain a little bit differently here, the sword of the Spirit, you know, we've heard like a two-edged sword. Well, the sword of the Spirit is actually the rhema word of God. The rhema word of God that comes up you from the belt of truth, which is the Bible. The rhema word is how you defeat the enemy in your life. When all of a sudden you're going through that storm of life, but you hear somebody at the word of God say, by his stripes, I am healed. You're taking the rhema word. You're taking the sword of the spirit and you're cutting the enemy's head off. When the enemy tells you, you can do no, nothing, you're never going to succeed. But then that rhema word comes up into you and says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You got the sword of the spirit to cut the enemy's head off. But you know what? You can't have the sword if you don't ever have the belt on. And if you don't read the word, if you don't study the word, that rhema will not come forth. It is written will not come forth if you haven't read the word. So what we're trying to do is to defeat the enemy with armor that we don't even have, we're not wearing correctly. But he's given us all power and all authority to defeat the enemy, but we got to do our part. Does that make sense to y'all? Back to the ship. Okay, they were on board. The ship started breaking up, and they started throwing things overboard to lighten the load. They were thinking, oh my goodness, I wish we'd listened to Paul. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're going under. He told them they were going to survive, but still, they were trying to, to lighten the load on the ship. And when you're going through the storms of life, you may have to throw some things overboard in your life. Not your spouse now. <laughs> I didn't tell you to throw your spouse overboard. But you're going to have to lighten the load <laughs> in your life. And the first thing that the, they threw overboard was their treasure. And don't you know they thought long and hard about that? Not our treasure. <laughs> Not our treasure. But you know what? When you're going through the storms of life, it really won't matter what kind of house you have, what your 401k looks like, how much money you have in the bank, what kind of car you drive. It's not going to matter. Jesus. See, anything that we put before Jesus can become an idol in our lives. And that's when we have to examine and say, Lord, what do I need? What am I putting before you? Hey, you can even put ministry before time with Jesus. We can get so busy doing good things that we don't spend time in his presence. And that's the most important thing that we can do is spend time in his presence and spend time with him. So we can get busy doing good things, but we got to spend time with the Lord. So they threw off the treasure. The next thing they threw off was the equipment. Now, I don't know what kind of equipment they had in those days, but I'm sure it was important to them at that time. So when you're going through the storms of life, there may be some, you think it's necessities, but maybe it's just some things that you have that you could throw overboard too. And one of those things may be social media. <laughs> People don't always have to know what's on your mind. 
Sometimes I think people have lost their minds. What about y'all? So my goodness, sometimes you say it best by saying nothing at all. Why did you say that? And some of these posts, I'm like, are you supposed to be a Christian or what? People are reading this. People put emails out there without thinking and think, ooh, I shouldn't have said it, but it's too late. It's out there now. So this is a time, and maybe you have to turn some TV off because if you're not depressed, it will depress you. You listen to enough news. I mean, that's all the airwaves has got negative stuff on it. You may have to throw off some things like that during the storms of life. The next thing they threw overboard was the flower. Now, don't you know they thought long and hard about, okay, not our food. <laughs> not our food, Lord. But they threw the food, the flower, overboard. And sometimes the Lord may ask us to do that four-letter word that we don't like. Fast. Fast. And it doesn't say, God, I've never understood how we can go from fast to feast like that. <laughs> We call a fast, and the next day we feasted on everything that we can. But the Lord may ask you, you may need to fast. But all in all, the Lord is, Jesus is the bread of life. He is the manna that we need. And he will give you the strength that you need during every storm in your life. Any storm. You know, when the Israelites were in the wilderness... The Lord gave them the manna that they needed one day at a time. And they would, if they picked up extra, what would happen? It would spoil. But if you'll notice, they had to pick it up. It wasn't like it was a snowflake falling from the sky. Okay, Lord, feed me. Feed me. Just like a bunch of Christians today. Feed me. You got to do your part. They had to go pick up the manna. <laughs> he is the bread of life. But if you don't spend time with him, you're not going to eat the bread of life and bring you strength that you need. But see, so many times we spend our lives worried about something that's not gonna happen. You're worried about things that will never take place because that's where the enemy comes against your mind. You need to learn to take one day at a time. Yes, plan. Sometimes it might, wasn't there a song one time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus? That's all I'm asking from you. I can sing, y'all just don't know it. <laughs> but seriously, sometimes it's got to be a few minutes at the time. Sometimes it's say, Lord, just give me what I need right now. But he will refresh you during whatever season that you're going through in your life. But every storm that you go through will make you stronger. And you say, well, why am I going through this? I just don't understand. It'll make you stronger. And the greater the struggle, the greater the harvest. And see, what some of you thought was a setback by God was only a setup to get you to the next level. You had to go through what you're going through right now to have faith to know that, you know what, I'm going to make it. God's got great plans. He's ready to open doors. And some of you right now are in the middle of your miracle. It's not time to quit or be discouraged. This too shall pass. So what we need to do is to praise him in the storms. See, we always want to praise him in the, in the good times. Oh, Lord, thank you for that breakthrough. Thank you for that prayer answered. Well, anybody can have faith and, and praise the Lord when you got money in the bank and your family's not driving you crazy and your body's well. But how do you praise him when you're going through the storms of life? You praise him in the good times. You praise him in the bad times. You praise him for who he is, the King of kings and Lord of lords and God of gods. But no matter what you're going through, this too shall pass and better days are ahead. So some of y'all just need to learn to dance in the rain. Y'all know uh, us white people can't dance. And if y'all notice we can't clap either. When you see the worship leader, she's leading on a clap and everybody's a half clap or a full clap behind and, and we're swaying this way and everybody else is swaying that way and... But that's okay. We can sway. <laughs> but you need to rehearse your victory dance. Right. And learn to dance in the rain. <laughs> to say, you know what, Lord, better days are ahead. 
Lord, rain down on us with your blessings. Lord, rain down on us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, refresh us and empower us here today, Lord. Rain down, Holy Spirit. We need you here today. Are y'all hungry for Jesus? Well, we just got to learn to dance in the rain and receive from him. So after this boat started breaking, they threw everything overboard and still the thing broke up and started falling apart. Don't you know they were thinking all that we went through, we're still going to have to, we got to sail to the shore of Malta on a plank. (laughs) But they decided to let the prisoners live. They wasn't going to shoot them. So here goes Paul, and I've taught a message on this, so I'm not going to go very much detail, but we got to finish what happened to the ship after it broke up in the water after they were in this storm. But as soon as they got on uh, this island of Malta, y'all remember what happened? They built a fire, and what came out and bit a viper, a snake. And what did he do? He shook that thing off. Could y'all shake a snake off like that? Y'all could not. I mean, I'm talking about a literal snake. I know what y'all do. Y'all be like me. So we squeal. Y'all acting like y'all all super Christians in here. We do not handle serpents. No, we do not handle serpents here. We're not snake handlers, no. But if we understand that the enemy is considered Satan too, and we're going to shake him off. But you know what? Have you ever thought why the snake bit Paul of all people? Well, he was doing God's will. Those other people wasn't doing God's will, and and it didn't matter, so. But you know what? He knew this man had been stoned. He had been in prison I don't know how many times. He had been in a shipwreck. Do you think he was afraid of this poisonous snake? No, he said, (laughs) Satan, not this and not today. And he shook that thing off. And y'all remember what happened. He had revival on the island, and everybody on there in the island was, was healed after he endured the storm. You'll never know how God can use you once you've endured the storms of life. See, if you've never been through anything, you can't minister to anybody else. But once you've been through sickness, once you've been through disease, once you've been delivered from alcohol and drugs, your testimony can change more lives than anybody else out there. And God can use you if you won't give up. You can't give up. So when the enemy starts to come with you with all these attacks, and they will come, what do you do? You do like Paul. You shake it off. (laughs) You shake it off. See, you have power and you have an authority over the enemy. And when those attacks come, what you need to do is to shake those attacks off and put the devil under your feet where he belongs. And say, devil, not this and not today. I'm going to walk in victory. Learning to dance in the rain. Life can be hard at times, but I tell you what, he's got great plans for all of you. And you that are watching this show, it's no accident that you're watching. He's got great plans for you. What you just need to do right now, if you're able, just get up and give you a victory dance to Jesus. Just dance in the rain in your den and say, Lord, I thank you for my breakthrough. I thank you that my day is ahead. I thank you that today is my day for my healing and my miracle. I thank you, Lord, that doors are opening this day. Deliverance is coming this day. That ought to make you happy. You know, you can preach yourself happy. Some of y'all look like you need to preach yourself happy today. I'm trying to preach you happy, but you need to preach yourself happy sometimes. But don't give up in the storms. This too shall pass. Our ministry is to spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world through the media. Television is very expensive, but so worth it. Have you ever wondered, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Do I have a purpose? Can I make a difference in someone's life? Well, friends, you can. By partnering with us, you can touch people's lives all over, and this world needs Jesus. If you would consider partnering with us, you can make a donation through our website, sandrahancock.org, or through the address that's on the screen, or you can even call us at 1-800-579-7350. I want to thank you in advance for being a blessing. 
I pray this message blessed you and you're going to put on the whole armor of God and you're going to fight because you have power and you have authority over the enemy. Whatever you're going through, whatever storm you're going through, this too shall pass. Better days are ahead. The blessings of the Lord are coming your way and it's time for you to learn to dance in the rain and rejoice with your victory march today. But if you're watching this show and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You're trying to face a storm all by yourself because you don't know Jesus. And if that's you and the Holy Spirit is drawing you in, I want to lead you to Jesus and just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life. And from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Find you a good Bible-believing church and grow to be more like Jesus. And also, let us know about it. We love to hear your praise reports. But if you're watching this show and you can say, I'm going through a storm and I need someone to pray with me, that's us. We have a 1-800 number. Just call us and we'll be glad to pray with you. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you. With your help, we are reaching so many people for Jesus. And we love and appreciate you. And we're praying for you every day. And if you would be interested in partnering with us, the information is on the screen. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. Don't you dare miss that show. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for watching our show, Voice of Hope. Friends, some of you may feel like you're at the end of your rope, but hang on. You have hope in Jesus. We still serve a supernatural, miracle-working God of now, and He loves you just the way you are. Also, I want to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. We would just love to have you as our guest. It would make our day. Now, for more information about the ministry or about our events, visit our website, SandraHancock.org. Last but not least, I want to thank all of our partners and friends who make this ministry possible, who help us spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world. We love and appreciate you so much. May God bless you.